Hey people, welcome to the run test. It's Kieran here. I'm up nice and early. I'm just off running my way into central London where I'm going to be chatting to Ramesh Patel. He is the Director of Materials Innovation at Allbirds. And in this interview, I'm going to be chatting to Ramesh about how difficult it is to make sustainable shoes that perform for the planet and also perform for us runners. Let's go meet him. My name is Ramesh Patel, I'm the Director of Materials Innovation uh, at Allbirds. I worked primarily in the footwear category on uh, the Mizzle collection, that was my very first project, uh, the Dasher, uh, Dasher 1, Dasher 2, and the one that we're here to talk about, uh, I've spent most of my time working on, which is the Tree Flyer. Uh, annually about 20 billion pairs of shoes are getting made uh, from the footwear industry. Majority of them are using uh, fossil fuel based raw materials and um, somewhat wasteful processes. And I think what we're trying to, to demonstrate here is that, you know, with the tree fire, that with, uh, uh, you do not have to compromise on performance uh, for the sake of sustainability or the other way around and uh, we're trying to bridge that gap between performance and sustainability in the footwear industry. The original Dasher is a, more of a couch to 5K kind of shoe. This definitely pushes those bounds further. Uh, five, 10K, say maybe half marathon in that ballpark. But by and far, this is for the average runner uh, who is hoping to put some miles every day on a shoe. Uh, the shoe would fit that bill really well. So with traditional you know, manufacturing processes for midsoles, uh, these are multi-step processes that can take, you know, going from this resin to making a midsole, could be uh, several stages in, in the several machineries that it needs to go through each machinery. Uh, consuming a lot of electricity and of course generating uh, just a little bit more amount of waste. So the cumulative of that is it's actually a high energy, high waste process. What we've been able to work on uh, for the flyer is to shrink this entire process into a single low energy machine. So we have a significant reduction in carbon footprint. Uh, in essence, these resins go into the machine, midsoles come out ready to assemble. You couldn't make it any simpler. You couldn't have a, any more of a shortcut in the manufacturing process, uh, even if you tried. So the ability to go from this, uh, from pellets to midsole in such a short amount of time, significantly reduces our, our processing time, obviously, but that in turn reduces our carbon footprint by a lot. During the development of the, of the foam and of the, of the midsole, we went through several, as I said, hundreds of iterations, and each iteration required, of course, making close to a thousand pairs of midsoles. Uh, so it, we were talking tons of waste that we generating during the development of the, of the product. And we actually, when we manufacture this, this midsole, uh, we generate about this much waste uh, on, each, in, on each pair. All of that waste gets collected back and remelted uh, and repurposed. This is PBACs, bio-based PBACs foam that honestly hasn't lost much of its performance. And so we repurpose that entirely to make the external heel counter. Uh, this is 100% made of the waste that we've generated during the entire development and the production of the tree flyer. So all of that gets repurposed into a very you know, stability enhancing uh, external heel counter that actually performs really well on its own. I'll almost argue that uh, you know if you, if you consider the the the, the flyer midsole made out of bio-based PBACs. PBACs is a high-performance resin that most most of the best-performing shoes use. The petroleum PBACs version shoes are pretty expensive. The fact that we're offering it in a as a bio-based resin of the same resin, uh, but in bio form, and uh, at, a, at the price point that we are offering it, actually I kind of feel like. It's, it's really well placed. Yeah, so I, I mean, I would say like, uh, uh, say 15 years ago, it was very difficult to, to make um, 
you know, high performance, sustainable shoes because there were very few resins available. Very few of these, you know, high performance that you, that you've uh, you've mentioned those are not available back then. That's not the case today. We have access to a lot of new resins that are bio-based alternatives for the same high performance resins that are available in the, in the petroleum category. It's just a matter of uh, iterating on it, uh, the time invested in, in developing it, and, and of course it comes as a slight premium. And uh, as an industry, we just have to get over that inertia. We just have to make that a commitment to, to push through that and, and commit to using sustainably sourced raw materials and practices. I, I will say it's, it's it's become significantly easier, and it's 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 it's. I think it's more of a mentality. My, it's a mindset thing. You know, it's like um, we don't entertain any resins that are not bio based. Every resin that we experiment with is bi is usually bio based. So bio based EVAs, bio based PBACs now that we're using in this shoe, and there are of course other uh, variations of that. Bio TPUs we've used those in the past. So we're not. Uh, using bio-based or sustainably sourced raw materials, that's not novel to us anymore. It's, it's become easier. We're tied into the partners who are developing those, those raw materials, and they know exactly what we desire, and then they sort of are able to tune their uh, materials for, for us. Um, again, the, what it takes to work with Allbirds, the table stakes are come to the table with uh, natural materials, with bio-based materials, and come with an LCA because we need to put the carbon footprint on the shoe. So that's just become the new way of doing business with Allbirds. Actually, yes, uh, more than even five years ago. Uh, uh, I think the, the example that, uh, that uh, Allbirds and Brass can put together on developing the bio-based uh, bio uh, EVA was a great beacon for, for the industry and, and a lot of chemical companies are definitely bringing up, uh, putting in a lot of innovation and a lot of time and effort and, and resources behind their bio-based versions of the same resins. I would say so, and and, and, and and you're you're right that you know we're uh, this is our this is definitely our best performance running shoe, uh, and during the development of this shoe, we never looked at it like how can we make this sustainable or how do we put our sustainability angle into it. We designed the shoe through hundreds of iterations of the foam, uh, of, of of the design, and and so on and so forth, all in the service of performance. So all had was an iterative process getting feedback from runners, putting it back into, into the design aspects of, of the shoe and on the, on the foam aspect of the shoe. So ultimately, this is a performance running shoe. How we make it and using the sustainable practices and using the sustainably sourced raw materials, that's up to us. That's our job. That's Albers's job. That's our, you know, the people working on the product. That's our job. So I, that's something the customer shouldn't have to think about. The customer should take the shoe and enjoy it for its performance. And that's how we hope that it's it's received. I think we all face a uh, our, our most inclement um, uh, danger right now is is climate change, and so we're laser focused as Allbirds as a company. We're laser focused on carbon footprints. Like that's been our our goal is to reduce that. Um, when it comes to uh, you know, re reducing the carbon footprint, uh, having midsoles or shoes that are fully recyclable in the future, uh, it's a very novel and you know, it's a great idea to have, but the truth is uh, as soon as you touch to sh an old shoe and start shipping it back to where it needs to get recycled, you already your carbon footprint clock has kind of started again. Uh, so for us, if you're truly being myopic on carbon footprint, um, we're focusing more on cleaning up what comes into making a shoe is more important in our in our in our case. No, we actually want we want everybody else to adopt uh, the same philosophies on on calculating carbon footprint and also putting it as label on on the shoe. Um, the reason why that, that's important, and we've open sourced all the calculators for them. It's much like uh, you know back in the days when when calorie counting became a thing for for 
for your foods and you never paid attention to the calories that you're taking in until someone put a number on it and you start now you're like okay look i don't fu fully understand the science behind the food science behind the calories but i know that a lower number is better and the same philosophy applies to carbon footprints so if i may not know the exact impact of one kilogram of co2 in the atmosphere but I know that lowering that number matters and it's important. And it's ultimately about giving the customers the choice. And so if all the shoe brands or all products in general had a carbon footprint, not saying that you'd never buy a high carbon footprint product because, you know, at the end of the day you want what you want and it, 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 it uh, fulfills a need for you, but at least you have that choice, the ability to make that choice. And that's what we're trying to offer. And uh, by by open sourcing our calculator to the entire industry, we've given them an open invitation to, to do the same. Ten years out, uh, I know my dream, and I think Albert's dream is the same, is to have a sustainable shoe that does not require offsets. The entire brand of Albert's is carbon offset, so the 9.92 kilograms of CO2 that we emit on this shoe is being actively offset right now. In an ideal world, this number is down to zero and we don't have to offset anything. And that will require innovations on in all fronts, not just materials, but processes and transportation and um, yeah, on every aspect. And we will have to make very uh, you know, disciplined calls on, on, what, on how we do that. And uh, I see that as a very interesting challenge and one that I want to take on. Uh, that's never been a target so far. I would say, I'd never say never, never say never, all right? So it may happen in the future, but for now we want people to just enjoy the shoe uh, in, a, in a community setting more than anything. It's like, go out, put the shoe on, go for a run and, and, and be healthier.